So uh, Anthony uh, Douglas and Andy Touch from Unity, they know everything about VR and uh, they will tell us about this and about uni evolution they are trying to do something about this about this stuff i like it a lot yeah it's great so thank you thank you for coming and let's start спасибо привет москва как дела хорошо хорош отлично okay the rest is in english uh, for your sake. Um, I'm Anthony Douglas. Uh, I'm the Vice President for Unity in Europe, Middle East, Africa. My team look after all the licensing um, services uh, that we offer. Uh, I'm supported ably today by Andy Touch, who's our senior, well, no, our product technical, what's your new title? Just say senior, it's fine. S senior, he's very senior. He's, <laughs> he knows all about VR, and he's gonna show you some amazing things that you can do with Unity in VR. Please pay attention because uh, at the end of this, I will ask a question uh, from Andy's presentation, which will mean that somebody gets this amazing prize, which I'll show you uh, at the end of the demonstration. So pay attention to everything he tells you. Also make sure you get over to our booth because we're giving away a flight and free pass to Unite Amsterdam at the end of the month, which will be a bunch of fun. So over to Andy to talk you through VR. Uh, Privet, спасибо. <laughs> I don't know anything else. Um, da and yet. Yeah. So my name's Andy. Um, I'm an evangelist for uh, Unity. So basically my job is to get the things that we're working on, uh, whether it's features or tools or VR or whatever it may be, and then show it off to people in talks or workshops. So it's why I'm here today. Um, this is my fourth dev gam, and it gets more and more fun and more and more busy every year, which is great. So I'm gonna be talking about virtual reality. So at the beginning of a talk, I normally ask people, how many programmers are in the room? So you write code, copy paste code. Okay, uh, okay, how many artists are in the room? One dude, uh, there's one girl. Um, how many audio people are in the room? No audio Nyet. people. Yet. okay. Um, how many people um, develop for virtual reality? Okay, pretty cool. How many people are interested in virtual reality? Hard as sure. <laughs> You've come to the best talk for this. So I'm going to be talking about virtual reality both from a high-level technical point of view but also a design point of view. And at Unity, we try to make things both as simple as possible. Um, so this is the VR face. This is one of my favorite sort of faces because everyone who tries virtual reality always pulls this face as they look around the environment. And that's kind of the magic of VR, being able to put on these goggles and be transported to another world or location um, for an element of time. And then you can do things you wouldn't necessarily be able to do in real life or would be frowned upon in real life. So everyone is planning for VR. This quote pops up quite a lot. So everyone from Valve, Facebook, Oculus, Sony, Nintendo, actually no, that's Virtual Boy, um, Microsoft, they're all thinking about uh, VR and how they can work for it, how they can develop headsets for it like this, or how they can create content for it. And at Unity, we want, we notice this change and we want to make it as simple as possible for you to be able to create um, VR content in Unity. So here's kind of the slide that summarizes the whole talk. It's actually really, really easy to render your content in VR but it's not so easy to design for VR. That You've got kind of these two steps. So at Unity, we've sort of solved the first point, and the second point's now actually the difficult point. So I'm gonna show you some in-edited stuff. Demo time. So if I go over to Unity, I have a very simple game. This game would be uh, great for mobile or desktop. It's not a very difficult game at all. Um, you just have a simple maze, and you have uh, buttons to rotate the maze, and you can click got it. You can click to a location, and the character runs to that location. It's a very, very simple game. Now, this game works very well on mobile, where you can swipe or you can push buttons. And on desktop, you could have an Xbox controller pushing left or right. Um, but what if we wanted to make this a VR game? So as opposed to looking at the maze from one angle, you can actually peer over it. You can actually look down at where the character is. Or if you're doing room scale, you can walk around the maze. That would be pretty cool. So in Unity, um, a lot of people ask us, we want to make really, really technical, complex things, but as simple as humanly possible. So what we've done is we've made uh, a button. So we tried to make it as simple as possible to be able to enable your content in VR. So yeah, people seem to just ask us for toggle buttons and sliders all the time, so we keep making them. So we have a simple virtuality button. 
And what this will do is auto magically in the background, it will enable this uh, game to run on Gear VR, so be able to slot in the phone, and on Oculus. And with some modifications, and in the long run, you'll be able to build it to any VR platform and it will instantly render. So then if I test the game, what it would do instead is if I had the VR headset plugged in, it would render it uh, to both eyes and you'd be able to look around it in uh, first person. Pretty cool. However, there's some buts here. And the first but is you need to ask what is the benefit of my game being in virtual reality? A lot of people assume games such as Minecraft or Call of Duty would instantly be better in virtual reality. Minecraft would be worse. In Minecraft, you have to hit 10,000 blocks. In real life, if you have to punch 10,000 blocks, that would physically wear you out. And in Call of Duty, you have a lot of content, explosions and things happening all over the place, which would be very disorientating. So you need to ask, what is the benefit of my content in virtual reality? And that's where the design side comes to it. So I showed you that maze, and I'm going to go through a couple of design principles and then show you kind of what the maze would look better um, in Unity actually kind of VR designed. So you need to look at consumer accessibility. And consumer-based VR is only just here. So you have some headsets that have already released, such as Google Cardboard. So put your hand up if you have a smartphone in your pocket. Or like iPhone, Android, Windows phone. OK, you all, alt uh, all automatically have a VR device in your pocket, because any smartphone can turn into Google Cardboard app, and then you can render everything in VR. So technically, it's consumer-based VR is already here. But then you have some things such as PSVR and the Vive and things like that, which are out, sort of out, and then they're sort of coming out in the future. And something like HoloLens, which is coming out in the long term. So we're kind of in this flux of some things being released and some things not. So here is my uh, graph that probably took me the most time in Microsoft Paint to create. And this is the order of accessibility. So at the top, you have Google Cardboard. So everyone here with a smartphone can in instantly enable their um, device to run on Google Cardboard and slide it into a piece of cardboard and experience things, which is great for accessibility because my grandma can pick it up and use it. She knows how to use a smartphone. Downside is the quality. You're limited to the phone, but also you're limited to what you can fit on it and what you can render. And the head tracking is not too good. But it's kind of that, that bonus there. Then you have the Samsung Gear VR. So I've bought one of these today. Um, if none of you have tried it, uh, well, I'll be on the booth and wandering around. Just come hassle me. I mean, come ask me to play uh, games. I've got various ones on here. And you can play around with it. And that's kind of more accessible because, for example, I could take it on a plane on Aeroflot and no one asked any questions about it, which was very lucky. Um, but it allows you to pull it out of your rucksack or your backpack and be able to play VR content anywhere. Next would be PlayStation VR. So PlayStation VR allows you to plug it straight into a PS4 and then run the content. So it's a very simple setup. And then next two would be Oculus and Vive, where you have to have certain machines, and they have to be powerful enough, and you have to have a room set up. I can't imagine my granddad, who's 70, setting up all these boxes and lighthouses and things. And then the next is HoloLens, which basically no one has. So you could make a game for the HoloLens, but then you can send it to like three people. Or you can make a game for Google Cardboard, and anyone with an iPhone, an Android, or a Windows phone, at least in the last couple of years, it would run on that content. So you have this kind of broad spectrum. And at Unity, uh, uh, in the VR industry, you've got like 60, 70, 80 other various VR headsets and things you slot in and custom things. Um, so this slide could actually be really, really long. Um, but I've picked kind of the main six. And at Unity, we support all of the main six. So we try to make it as simple as possible. So we have a plugin written by Google and uh, distributed, but we're working on natively supporting Google Cardboards directly in Unity. And I'll show you some of that later on. Um, we also have Gear VR automatically. You click that button, it works in VR. Uh, PSVR automatically works in the PS4 build of Unity. Oculus automatically works. Valve have made a plugin which makes it really easy to set up room scale VR. Um, and we're going to have native support. And you can also download. Who here has a HoloLens, by the way? OK, well, you can already download the Unity build to test out HoloLens before you have a HoloLens, which is kind of cool, but a bit strange. Um, so basically, we want to make it as simple as possible. So rather than having to rebuild your game for six platforms, we want to make it as simple as you click the button, and it should work. So I'm going to talk about VR input. 
So you have a standard VR input across all headsets. So that's the ro uh, rotation of the head, so where, uh, how the player is looking. The position, so where the position is in the, in the world space. But also the direction the player is facing, called gaze. So it's what object you're looking at. And this is common across all, all, of, these, uh, all of these platforms. It's a very common input. So you can track all of these things in Unity just by getting position of object, rotation of object, and then ray casting out from where you're looking at. You automatically have all the code for you. But then you have some extra input. So in mobile, um, you have the Google Cardboard, which is a uh, one button click. But then on Gear VR, you have this weird kind of crosshair, which is basically kind of swiping and double tapping and things like that. So in Unity, we've decided to, rather than you uh, write a ton of extra code to support this, it's basically mouse input. So that button is left click of a mouse. Uh, whoop. Yeah, that but, uh, Google Cardboard button is left click of the mouse, whereas this would be, imagine your mouse is on the headset and you're basically doing that. So we try to make it as simple as possible for you to be able to already have input working. And any extra prefer peripherals are a bonus. I see lots of content that's, oh, you have a belt attached here and you have arm, 10 armbands and then you've got a thing on your head and then on your ears and you've got like these 20 different things tracking all your senses, which is fantastic, but no one has all those things unless they're super rich. So my advice would be to either design for no extra peripherals and no extra input, generic peripheral input, which I'll talk about in a bit, or sort of platform exp exclusive input. So in Esper and Esper 2, which I think I have on my device, so you can play it, um, they actually use the head tilting and determine where you look, and you can actually swipe on here to be able to swipe and do different actions and events, which is pretty cool. Um, in a game, Land's End, which is made by the team that made Monument Valley, has everyone played that? One dude is playing Monument Valley, cool. Oh yeah, some more people, yeah. <laughs> yeah, duh. Um, so in Land's End, they have no extra input. You just look at a direction and then you almost have like a progress bar that fills in, kind of like the Kinect. Um, that way you don't have to feel around for this touchpad and they could technically release the game on any platform. Now, controller-based VR is a bit more tricky because you have these three different controllers that look completely different. So the PlayStation Move controller, which has four buttons, and I think one in the middle. You then have the Oculus Touch, which has two buttons, and then two triggers, and then and the joystick. And you have this weird Vive one, which has a trigger, buttons on the side, and this weird sort of haptic touch trackpad. So it's very tricky to design something for all three of them. So if you create something for joystick, it won't work on that one. So what a job simulator actually does is they actually just track the trigger button and use everything for the trigger because they just have to track one button and that one button basically does everything. So, and then it works across all the platforms, which is good. And you can actually pick up that paper airplane and throw it and hit a robot in the face. It's really, really cool. Um, or you could just go for one peripheral. So the Vive trackpad has this uh, touchpad which allows kind of touches and swipes in different ways. It's very, very responsive. And in Tilt Brush, they use this. Um, this is created by Google. It's a kind of like Microsoft Paint, but in a 3D in Unity. And you can basically paint the environment and walk around it. And you use the trackpad to view different brushes and styles. And then you also have augmented reality. So if you plug a device into the back of here, it actually doesn't cover the back camera. So you can do rendering in the real world. So you can have a look through. I could have a look at, for example, the uh, Unity logo and have Unity content come out of it. So you can actually combine augmented reality in virtual reality. And you could do this with Unity with the Gear VR and Cardboard straight away, um, but performance may suffer because you have to track the headset and track what you're drawing and basically calculate that on top of each other. But they did this for this pop-up book. So it's a kid's book. Um, you can play the whole game in 3D, and the Unity plugin uh, for um, Google Cardboard allows you to enable and disable um, Google Cardboard at runtime. So you can actually not just make a VR app, you can actually combine it with things. Um, so the Star Wars app does this as well. And the Star Wars app allows you to view different content from Star Wars, um, but you can actually enable VR mode and have a look around Jakku or Tatooine or somewhere and have a look at the Millennium Falcon flying over, which is pretty cool. So in this app, they use both uh, normal 3D, um, virtual reality, which they call magic goggles for kids, and augmented reality, which is called hologram mode for kids as well. It's pretty cool, and they combine all three. 
So next thing's UI. So screen space doesn't exist. So normally you'd have health bars in the top left-hand corner or a progress bar in the bottom or a mini-map in the bottom right. And in VR, this doesn't really work anymore because you're not really working in screen space, you're working in world space. So you need to make all your UI world space. In Unity, that's very, very easy to do. Or you can even turn your UI into 3D objects. So in Angry Birds, friends, um, you have, for example, all the content on your screen, which is great. You can make things such as the blue bar slide off, slide in, slide up, slide down. But in VR, you're not, uh, you're not limited to what you can see in a square. You have a sphere around you. So you slide in left and right doesn't exist anymore. It's slide in from this part of the world to this part of the world. So think of things as less designing for what you can see in front of you and more of you're inside a cage and you can view all around you, which is actually quite intimidating. So in Space Pirate Trainer, where you shoot robots with uh, guns and it's pretty fun, they have 3D UI, which actually comes out of the ground like this, and you have various panels all around you. And it's actually quite intimidating seeing this high score board that's actually kind of towering up in first person. It's pretty cool. In Radial G, which is a very fast racing game, um, they actually integrate the UI directly into the car. So you're used to a dashboard of driving a normal car, so you've got the dashboard in VR in front of you. And in Fantastic Contraption, um, the levels are actually just 3D objects you actually pick up and put somewhere. So rather than a level select, select screen like this, where you click level one, level two, level three, you walk over to a table and you pick up and look at which level you want to use and then put it. Or you could just pick them up and juggle if you want to. It's up to you, really. People like juggling in VR. That's kind of the weird thing. And the other thing to think about is you no longer have a mouse cursor. So I've got my mouse cursor here. That doesn't really exist in VR anymore. Um, for a non-controller, having a 3D UI element in front of where you look completely works. Um, but if you have controller-based VR, um, use your sort of cursor or your controllers as um, your wand. So like this. So in the Steam VR app, you actually have a wand, and you almost conduct and click and point to where you're going to interact with the content. So I've spoken about many things. Um, how much time do I have left, by the way? Five minutes, beautiful. Five minutes for presentation, eh? Whoa. I'm in trouble. So that was that previous app. I'm now going to open one uh, in true Blue Peter style, but I realize I'm in Russia and no one knows what Blue Peter is here. Yeah? Um, so you can see here that this has changed slightly. So you can actually download this project and have a look at it, pull out different content, put different content in and see it. But what we've done is we've actually taken the screen space UI and made it float in front of the world in front of you. So if I leave the project, uh, or leave run build, you can see here that we actually have a big 3D UI. And with Unity's UI system, it's as simple as uh, going to here, and instead of rendering something in screen space, which would be here, you select world space. It's now an object in your world. So again, it's like one button to enable VR, two buttons to make it look in VR. And we also have a couple of other things. So, so we also have the world in front of you. So we have here the progress bar. Um, another common thing in VR is lots of people, because they're not restricted to where they look, they look in the opposite direction. So if you have uh, an animator has created a dragon that flies over here and they've spent two months on it, but your player is looking at flowers on the ground over here, they're going to completely miss the dragon, and then they're going to tell, oh, I've just missed the content. So in VR, you have to not put big arrows, but kind of tell people to look in the direction of the content. So a neat trick is actually playing an audio clip like one or two seconds before the content appears. So before the dragon appears, play like a roar in that direction, the player looks in that direction, and then a dragon appears. Um, in the Star Wars app, um, the Millennium Falcon flies over. And before you hear it, you actually hear the laser blasts in that direction, and then you can look in the direction of Millennium Falcon. It's very cool. So here we've got big obnoxious arrows and subliminal messaging as well. Um, so you can see here that we have in this example project, which you could download, as you look to a different location, it would then point you in that place. So you can specify a bounding zone you're going to look at. The other thing is I've taken the arrows and, hang on, this mouse is not very good. Um, I've taken the arrows and rather than them being on the screen, they're actually positioned in the world. And that's the same as enabling the UI from screen space into world space. 
And the other thing I've done is rather than having buttons that you click and instantly menus disappear, in VR, a lot of people are experiencing it for the first time, so they'll accidentally click different things in the scene. So instead, we have a progress style bar to confirm, are you sure you want to play this game? And when it finishes, it actually fades the UI because people don't really like things popping in and out. So this is a really, really easy game. All you have to do is you have to walk here, avoid that gun, that would then turn off the gun, and then you have to walk here. But what you can see is, if I was looking over here, the whole skybox is a little trick. The whole skybox is actually fading red, so I know that something is happening somewhere in the world. So if I'm looking at this logo saying, ah, oh, look at this nice logo, rather than it being white, the whole skybox is turning to red. It's a very neat trick to be able to determine that something's gone wrong. Oh, I've lost the game, brilliant. So if I go back, um, we also have a simple fading as well. Yeah, the game really is quite easy. And we also have here the progress bar, again, changing the UI from screen space to world space, is all 3D objects positioned in the world. So you can see here that we actually have the UI um, on there. So we could have this as a 3D object, but currently it's a 2D one. And the other bonus of VR is you can actually go wild with particle effects. So normally, if I was playing this mobile game, you'd only be able to see sort of this chunk of the screen, whereas because it's in VR, I can see the confetti bounce into the air and sort of like, bounce off the edge of the cliff, which a lot of people quite like things falling off cliffs in VR. It's quite weird. And then if I go play again, it would then fade in and out. So it's very simple. Like It's basically the same game, but you just have to change some elements. So I think I have one minute or minus one minute left. Um, so I want to show you just very quickly how you'd set up a room scale VR, because that was just for seated experiences, where you just sit there and you look in a particular direction. So Valve have created a plugin, um, which you import into Unity, and they've tried to make it as simple as possible as drag and drop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Unity camera and delete it. I'm going to go to Valve's plugin, which you can download for free on the Asset Store. Drag and drop it in. We already have room scale VR. So we already have a room with your bounding box, where you're going to go, where you're going to be. Um, you can actually uh, change the scale of the room to be thinner or smaller or bigger, depending how big your house is. I live in Brighton, so my house is not very big. Um, but you can also see here that we have a camera, controller, and controller as just game objects. And if I had this plugged into the Vive, it would instantly have you tracking, walking around, and doing things. So if I wanted to add a sword to this controller, I could take my sword, attach it to the controller, reset its position, and we already have a sword attached to my hand here. So as I move my hand around, we then have sword attached onto there. So it's very, very quick to drag and drop in, instantly starts working, it's very fun. And you can even like change the color of uh, the bounding box. That's how sort of in-depth it is. Um, I think I've run out of time. Yeah, yeah I suppose um, uh, here will be a couple of questions for you, maybe more. I have so one or two slides, if that's okay. It'll be like 30 seconds. Oh yeah, of course. So, sorry. Um, so uh, we're also working on a Unity Editor VR. So as opposed to just taking Unity as it is and then dumping it in VR, which is some things would work, some things won't. I imagine writing code in VR, which I've actually tried, is horrible. And animating in VR is actually horrible as well. So what we're doing is we're actually designing it from the ground up with things that make sense to be in VR. So for example, one big issue is the scale of items. So you design for in the 2D screen, and then you put on the VR headset, that mountain is now like the size of a house. So the VR editor, for example, you have these 3D gizmos that you'll be able to scale up the house and scale down the house. So it's the things that make sense to be in VR. And we're also working on kind of like, you, you're not only standing at the location, but let's say you wanted to go to this uh, building here, it would take a long time to get to in VR. So we're working on a chessboard, kind of a top-down view, so this is how meta it is. You can actually pick up your character and place it somewhere in VR, your scene camera. So you can actually design and build worlds in VR. So we're taking the stuff that makes sense rather than kind of shoving stuff in that doesn't really make sense. Writing code in VR is really, really horrible. It's really bad. Um, we also have the maze and a spaceship shooter and um, a corridor shooter all downloadable for free from the asset store. And you can pull these out, see how we created content, how we built it. Um, Google Cardboard, or Google, actually made a Unity demo project as well, which you can download, play around with, experiment with. It shows different things. 
And Microsoft, before anyone has a HoloLens, they've already released on GitHub their Unity HoloLens Galaxy projects. So you can download and see how you set up holograms and things like that, which is pretty amazing. And you can poke around with that. And so what now? Go and experiment. It's uh, the best way to learn. So question time. So very quickly, I'll do this. He forgot to actually give you the information that we agreed oh, before no. that I would ask the question on. But the founder of Oculus uh, said that he's seen 85% of content in VR made in Unity. First hand up, what is the founder of Oculus's name? <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> hey? There he is. He's the winner. So you're the winner. There you go. That's your own yeah, set of Unity. Great. Cardboard. <laughs> I'm it's really not a lunchbox. I was supposed oh, to say that great. at the beginning of the talk, but I completely forgot. I'm really sorry. I can't rehearse for some people. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. And I think uh, here will be a couple, maybe three questions, and after that uh, will be next uh, lecture. So please feel free to ask. Каким образом можно делать разработку под HoloLens, если у меня нет HoloLens, или есть какой-то картонный HoloLens, который я могу скачать и сделать? What, uh, how we can make a development of uh, some something if you don't have HoloLens when you want to try to do something with HoloLens, or when it will start? Um. Go Maybe talk to Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're over there. They have a big booth, and yeah. Um, so we've developed the stuff, uh, the plugin for Hololens. Um, they handle all the Hololens hardware. So, but they have a whole bunch of people here. So go annoy them. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> uh, good advice. Maybe just write to yes. Microsoft yes. something. Very expensive. Very. Talk to Microsoft. <laughs> Maybe using something cheaper and similar. Car Car Google Cardboard. Um, is so it there similar? Is some things like Intel are working on kind of a, it's called RealSense, and it's kind of like a depth tracking camera built into a tablet. Um, also, augmented reality already exists for Android, iOS, and things like that. HoloLens is just kind of a, a, the next level up. Mm -hmm. um, so you can already do augmented reality. HoloLens is kind of the future. <laughs> Head set based. Uh. Um, thank you what you told us today. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, I never did anything for virtual reality yet, and I can see that you did some experiments. So what do you think will be the best genre of the game for virtual, for virtual um, reality? I think one thing that's missing is social, like uh, multiplayer content, because a lot of people just take a single player experience, put it in VR, and then you have about seven people sitting there with their arms crossed, kind of bored, watching one player have the best fun in their life. So I think games such as, I actually have a slide, but I didn't show it. Uh, this game, for example, has one person in VR diffusing a bomb, and then you have people outside with like a 20 page booklet trying to, uh, yeah, trying to help it. And I think content where you have people inside VR and people outside of VR is kind of gonna be a lot better than one person having one experience. And in Unity, I know you can set up the Vive to have people on the desktop doing things um, in the world, but also someone in Vive. So I saw one game which was two people on the desktop with Xbox controllers racing go-karts around. And then one person in, in Vive, uh, they didn't want to make a level editor, editor, so one person in Vive picking up ramps and designing the environment um, whilst the go-karts are racing around. And they even picked up the go-karts and threw them off a cliff. And, Yes, yeah, so that was three people in there. Because there's a lot of people. I actually have a slide. Do I have a slide? Maybe I have a slide. No, I got rid of it. Um, where you have one person playing it, having the most fun, 10 people outside of it. If those 10 people outside of VR can influence the stuff in VR, that would be interesting. So multiplayer games, I think, will involve people more, rather than one person, one person, one person. Um, I think we've overran on time. Oh, there's one more question, is that okay? Oh. Andy, thanks for your speech. Uh, my uh, question is about performance problems, performance issues. Uh, as we all know, we use two cameras in VR, so uh, we should uh, uh, render twice more uh, objects in scene, tw twice more, use twice more resources. Uh, so this thing has uh, limited resources on its uh, CPU and GPU, so the question is, uh, does Unity plan any uh, technical solutions, any decisions to cut, uh, dramatically cut 
the resources, resources uh, for uh, the best for performance? So yeah, so one thing that we're working Better on performance. Um, would be like a single pass thing, so it actually combined the, uh -huh. the two things. Yeah, I mean besides the well-known techniques uh, such as uh, static uh, draw call batching, dynamic batching, we all know uh, these things works. I mean besides these things, any new uh, cut edge features? Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Valentin probably knows. Um, he's giving a talk later on. Um, yeah, so Valentin's going to talk later on about kind of the technical in deep stuff about performance and stuff like that. Sorry, Valentin. In Russian. In Russian. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Andy. So we, right now we have a next lecture. So I think the guys just ask you in here somewhere. Yeah. Thanks so much. It was fun. Спасибо. 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 Thank you. Thank you for brilliant, brilliant presentation.